This week's a little different because I have made some long needed upgrades. Now I know last week, some of you were here, we had Luke, we already did some of the graphic upgrades. Um, I still have not got the lower third done yet. I've got to get that animated and moving, but I will eventually just, you know, it's, it's a lot has been going on. We have acoustic panels in here now. I've I, not, not really a whole bunch of expensive stuff, but a lot of stuff that like, this is like a $10 pop filter. I put on my mic and has Charlie climbed the acoustic panels yet. No, he has not. And if he does, I, I realize what I'm gonna have to do. I have some on the green screen. They are green, but they are still coming up sometimes like they're slightly the wrong green. So I'm gonna have to take those panels and put them behind the green screen, which is going to be so much fun to take that all down. Yeah. That. But anyway, to give you an idea of what has changed this week, um, this used to be the center of the audio setup, this fungus, this is a, That's 10, a lot of switches. 10 channel mixer we used for this. Because when I started doing this, this was a long time ago. I, I've been doing this for almost 24 years as of the end of, of this month. Um, I know. Um, back the show when we can did, almost rent a car. Almost. Back when I did this originally, uh, computers were not capable of using, like, effects plugins live. So it, you could record something and do edit the, the audio and put the effects on it there and it would work just fine. But they couldn't handle lot because they weren't powerful enough. So in order to get things like a noise gate and a compressor and other things to for more professional sound, um, I had to use a mixer, which like this, and I had to get an actual physical audio compressor, this thing, all of this for nine. Um, and that's what I've been using for a long time. If you want to know how wacky this setup was to get some of the stuff to work. Um, in order to get, say, the audio that Tara was using, I had to use, I, I used a sound blaster for my regular audio, but to get audio from Tara or anybody else, I would take the audio out of the motherboard's sound card, the one that's built into the motherboard, the little place you plug in the speakers, little greens. Yeah. Um, I would run a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable, the kind that you used to plug in your iPhone in your car. I'd run that from the back of the computer over to here. Then from here, this insert channel would go over to the effects processor, which would be how the uh, compression, de all that stuff, uh, dynamics and whatnot, peak limiting. Then it would come back from here over to here, go through the EQ, there's there's a gain, the preamp, all that stuff. I only use two channels on this damn thing. But this is the only mixer, the only USB mixer I could find that had an insert channel. It's stupid, I know. That was how we had things set up. It was a gigantic pain. Because yeah, we'd have to take it out of one part of the computer then put it into this, and then we'll go back into the computer through the USB. So it come out of one part, go completely around. Well, years went by, and I did not upgrade my setup. But computers got better, and you were able to use effects, the same effects you would use for recording. You were able to use those live while the, while the audio was playing, which is what we're doing right now. Um, also, I want to show you, this is just insane. These are all the cables... That got pulled out of the setup. This pile of Nine. here is cables and ground loop um, isolators because when you plug the same electronics back into themselves across the same outlet, you get 60 cycle hum sometimes. So I had ground. Just look at this the nonsense. Well, that's all gone now. I finally entered the 21st century, 20 years later. Um,. I have now an iMac use... and this little microphone I bought on Amazon. <laughs> and a clip-on ring light. Each week. Let's see, can I get this right? Over here. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And... Do you really not have that memorized by now? What? 
the intro? No, I mean get the video over. I don't I don't read the video. Oh, read the intro. okay. I have to take it I from you, the folder. I'm like, I'm like, don't you say that in your sleep now? I have to take that from the folder and put it over on the playlist. That's how oh, that okay. works. Okay. Hi, gotcha. are you done now? Are we done now? Have you figured your shit out yet? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Well, you started talking about Charlie, so now he's offended. Of course he is. Goofball. All right. All right. Is everything working? It looks like it's working. Please be working. All right. Let's get to our first story. I can find shit over here. I have so many windows open. It's not fair. I don't want this. Here we go. All right. First up, I should set this to terror first. Whoops. Learning curve. I will get this. All right. First up, fucking McDonald's. I think this is like last time it was Burger King that did this shit. This time it's fucking McDonald's. McDonald's rebrands Happy Meal as just the meal for Mental Health Awareness Week. McDonald's rebranding its infamous Happy Meal as just the meal. In the United Kingdom, removing the smile from the box to encourage conversation about children's emotions. Fast food chain shared a commercial on its UK YouTube page featuring children expressing their feelings, sharing how their emotions can be complicated, and they are not always happy. One child explains about feeling different types of emotions. Girl next to her describes it as a mood salad. Uh, Instead of the yellow smile, the box contains stickers of different types of mouths. A confused squiggle, a slanted line, a slight frown, and even the traditional smile. That's what Hellness Week runs through Sunday. <sighs> what the fuck is this? I never got the impression that the Happy Meal was supposed to mean you were happy all the time, but that the meal was supposed to make you happy. I it's... <sighs> If you're selling me a meal with a confused squiggle... <laughs> Judo says, ba da ba ba ba, ambivalent. <laughs> it's, I, look, I understand kids need to be able to express their emotions in healthy and, and productive yeah. ways. Yes, I know that. This is not what I would classify as a healthy and productive way. You're like, okay, Jimmy, you'll get your nuggies in a second, but first, Which face are you going to put on the box to tell me how you're feeling? Well, Dad, I'm a little pissed off you got my nuggets in there. And you know the stupidest part? Inside Out 2 just dropped. Yeah. They had a perfect tie-in. Oh, yeah. Just tie the Happy Meal into that movie that's all about managing your emotions. Yep. Make a tie-in to that movie. Done. Done. But no, you got to screw with it, man. This. But instead, we're trying to sell you the sadness meal. Look, nobody wants to buy that. Kids have got enough shit to deal with. If you want to have to have these conversations with them, have these conversations with them. Don't fuck with their McDonald's while you're doing it. Come on. Yeah. They don't need homework the for the. When we were kids, McDonald's yeah. was just like an unmitigated treat, right? Oh, yeah. There was a big, terrifying fucking plastic tree in the corner for some reason. There was a and jail like, that was made that was like Mayor McCheese or, or the double, the quarter, pe- whatever it was. He was like a he was like a giant cop burger. Yeah. And and you like I'm not taught. It sounds like I'm talking like a dream or some horror nightmare or some shit. No, it was this giant burger that was a policeman. And you got his jail was inside of his head. They put you yeah. in in burger jail inside a burger cop's head. It was yeah. weird. Shit was and weird. Legit, like, look, if you haven't seen the McDonald's tree from the 80s, look that shit up. It's so scary. Like, there's oh, yeah. a reason Gen X is fucked up. OK, mm-hmm. yeah. But and now there's all this moral value attached to going to McDonald's, right? Because it's bad for you and it's bad for the environment. And like, it's like on the good place, like being a good person used to be really easy, but now it's really hard. Like just buying flowers, all these different moral points. Yeah. Like it's, it's already harder and your mom's already going to catch shit for buying you that happy meal. Right. Let's not make it harder. 
Just man, let, just let, let the have... kid have their chicken nuggets and their apple slices for fuck's sake. Like I, you, you're, you have good intentions, sure, but they're, they're fucking cheeseburgers do not need to involve homework. Okay. No. Come on. And I also feel like we shouldn't. I'm not a parent, but yeah. I feel like we shouldn't be looking to a fast food corporation for like how to talk to our children about their feelings. Thank you. Like there's other Thank places we can you. get that advice. Brought, ne- brought to you by Omni Consumer Products. All right. Um, <laughs> next up. <sighs> I have never done a dine and dash. I have known people who have. I've known Cammies who did a dine and dash. I was like, oh, that was one of the shittiest things. We were at a fucking IHOP at at 2 a.m. And one of the tables of Cammies dined and dash. And we were all still stuck there. Oh, I just had people at the big long table who would take off and not leave any money. And everybody had to cover them. Yeah. Um. So, I mean. Oh, but it's still of all the crimes, the dine and dash rates pretty low down there. So I feel like this is a bit of an escalation that didn't really need to happen and kind of made everything much worse. Chinatown dine and dasher leaves behind gun, sandals, and social security card after fight with restaurant staffers from Boston. And it's, it's, I, it is a pink, it is a pink pistol. It is a little pink pistol. I've eaten in Chinatown in Boston Uh, and it was not because it was Chinatown, but the particular restaurant was very scary. Boston police report arresting one of two people who fled without paying for a meal at a Chinatown restaurant Saturday night after she pointed a gun at one worker trying to stop her, then beat her, then ran outside as she dropped the gun and her social security card. So essentially, you you tried to do crime and fucked up every part of it. Every part of the crime. It's all... all and just, somehow left yeah. your shoes. Left your fucking shoes. Woman Don't take off your a... shoes in the restaurant. Woman also, f- oh yeah, because well, they're sandals, so that's still. But nobody needs your fucking feet out in the restaurant. <laughs> Woman fled without her sandals. Police say Zare Alexander, 24, of Charleston, Charlestown, sorry, who police quickly identified by reading her name on her social security card. Turned herself in Monday at Boston Municipal Court. And by turning themselves in, that means someone called her and said, get your ass down here. No, no, get get your ass down or we will come and get you. Alexander identified in court records as Zare Amira Richardson. Okay. Uh, was arranged on charges of assault and battery causing injury on a person over 60. Illegal possession of a loaded firearm and illegal possession defrauding of ammunition. Defrauding an innkeeper. Wait, what? Defrauding? That's Def- on the books? That's some original colonies bullshit. Like, <laughs> that, that law has been on the books since 1693, and they just never changed the name. Because Massachusetts finish- is that old. After finishing their meals, it was time to pay the bill. The female left the table, went to the bathroom, while the male left the restaurant without paying the bill. Staff attempted to stop the male, but were unsuccessful. When the female exited the bathroom, she attempted to leave, but was confronted by staff about paying the bill. After being confronted by staff, the female pulled out a firearm, and a struggle ensued. Staff member was able to free the firearm from the female's possession before she fled the restaurant in a vehicle. One victim was treated at a restaurant by Boston EMS for minor injuries. And th- this is, d- do you want the cherry on top? It's from the update, the, se- the July 5th update. Judge denies request to hold suspect as potential danger to society, but orders her held in lieu of the $10,000 bail, he said. So y- you're not a danger, but uh, if you're broke, then we'll hold you. You might, you, you went around right, waving a gun, 
that's a problem. Yeah. But it's but more of a problem. Money. Not having money is a bigger problem. Yes, that is that. She's is lucky important. she didn't eat at the place I did in Chinatown in Boston because I'm pretty confident. Is it is it China? It's the triads, right? Not the yak- yakuza's. Yeah, Japan. China's triad, Japan's yakuza. Yeah. We went to this restaurant. First of all, our waiter had very recently been beaten the fuck up. Can I can I just pause here and say it is amazing. That not only does, does Tara have a Chinatown story, she has a Boston Chinatown story about a crime while we're doing a story about Boston Chinatown crime. How the fuck? There wasn't, we didn't witness a crime. <laughs> but like, our waiter was beat the fuck up recently. As we walk in, we pass a back room that's just a bunch of people gambling at tables. And like, they close the door real fast. There were a lot of like tanks with fish way too big to be in the tank. You are like this nexus of various anecdotes that somehow like you've heard about Marvel, the nexus of all realities. That's you only with this bullshit. I you're what you're what ties it all together, Tara. I am a nexus being. I try to keep that on the down low. But I am a nexus beat. But yeah, all the, the guys I was with were like, sit back in the corner. Nobody, everyone sits facing outward. And I'm like, and I'm oblivious at the time. I'm like 23. I don't know shit. And I'm like, why? And they're like, in case we need to flip the table up. <laughs> but the food was real good. <laughs> the food was legit. <laughs> anyway. Oh, moving right along. I want to note this week, we do not have any fireworks stories. Um, wow. Well, not because there weren't any, because it's because they were all fatalities. Oh. And that shit isn't funny. Although I will briefly mention that one of them happened in South Carolina because a fully grown adult tried to launch a firework off the top of his head. We had the town next to me, the professional fireworks show, when they were testing stuff the day before, everything went off at once and caught fire. The professional show. All right, let's move along. This is Massachusetts. So this, this is an actual factual mass hole. So that's really cool. Um, that was the last one. Yeah, it's true. It's Boston. It's Mass. Yeah, it's Mass Hole too. Th- this one is. Um, I don't ride the bus much because I don't have the opportunity to because our public transportation here in, in Charleston, South Carolina, sucks the big one. But I kind of understand how it works. It is a system. There is a place. You go. You sit down. And eventually, there will be a big truck with a lot of seats in it you go on there you give them a little card then you sit the fuck down and you shut the fuck up that's that is the system and it will take you somewhere it's not hard to follow i just laid it out for you in about 20 seconds that's the whole the deal can be hard to follow but i got in a I got on a bus once in Harlem needing to get to the Metro North and wound up the wrong direction and a hundred blocks the other direction. But the directions can be tough. Well, there is one basic direction. It's you go to a place, you sit your ass down. No, but I mean like navigating the route. Uh. The actual act of getting on the bus. Yeah, that's easy. Why did this do this? Why did you do that? I didn't want you to do that. Do that. There we go. No, that's that's just... The, why are you doing this to me? I hate you. I'm trying to do new cool things and the computer doesn't want me to. That's not the right one. That's not the right one. That's the wrong one. I want to do this one. No, you don't. Shut up. All right. Here we go. I can get this to actually work. Man angered over a bus stop location smashes a Massachusetts 
Uh, I think that's MB Transportation Association bus, says Transit Police. So here's what happened. A man from Medford is facing charges after an apparent case of bus stop location rage. Transit police say the man smashed the front windshield of an MBTA bus with a glass jar. Random. Because he was angry he could only board the bus at the designated spot. That's what a bus stop is. I just said! I just said! Like, you don't hail it like a cab wherever no. you happen to be. You have to be where it's going. You go to a place, you sit down, and it comes to you. That's how it works. That's the deal. It's a very simple. This shit's not a la carte. It's a very simple fucking deal. It'd be like pissed off that the bus ain't stopped. Where, why are you throwing a glass jar? Where did you get a glass jar? What are you doing? I mean, there are a lot of this stupid stuff happens all the time, but the reason given was the one this story stuck out to me for. It was like, do you not understand how the bus works? This that, is a very that's literally simple... how the bus works. Like you've been doing this since you were six, right? And Boston has a pretty decent public transit system. Oh. A lot of people use it because the roads in Boston were designed by a toddler on LSD. Oh man, so many of the the original early American cities, the roads are they're made New with York, the ice. It's a nice, it's a grid. It's a grid. It has numbers. Ah, Very the easy. Dutch. Boston, Boston is fucking. I'm going back to the good place, but it's fucking Jeremy Barry, man. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, uh, this shit's what? Why Tom Brady stayed so long? He didn't actually want to be a patriot that long. He just couldn't get the fuck out. It's like, I, how do you get to be in a city? You get to have buses. I don't get to, I, we kind of have buses here, but nobody takes them because they're like, there's like three and nobody knows where the bus stops are. We it's, have the most adorable terrible. little mini trains. And I guess like being from New York, if you're going to take the subway, like the, the even the, the subway that everyone commutes on is like 12 cars long. The little commuter rail here, it's like two cars and they're so small and cute. So this next one is we get we hit this is like the asshole of the week like the asshole of the week i understand we are in america and the basic act of policing the police are not really there to solve crimes they are there to maintain order there's a difference yeah but you are expected when uh when, when something is stolen your only recourse is of course the police typically i will say you're you're meant to go to the police not because they're actually going to find your shit it's so you can get a report from them that says yes this was stolen so that you can give it to your insurance people the odds of you getting your shit back well apparently one woman did not like this this state of affairs and that's fair i it, it is kind of a shitty situation however you do not combat that by inventing a kidnapped child. Missing child in stolen vehicle did not exist. Woman arrested. El Paso police scrambled when a woman called 911 on Sunday claiming her small child was inside a vehicle that was reportedly stolen. Police officials said it turned out the child did not exist. Stacy Deshay Marie Smith, 19, and oh, she is so mad. She's big mad. Look at that. Look at that mugshot. She is big mad. 
um, was arrested on a charge of making a false report or an alarm. Smith is accused of making up the missing imaginary child in order to elicit a faster response from police in finding her friend's vehicle that allegedly been taken. A search for the child in the vehicle began about 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, police first received a call reporting a vehicle theft. Smith then allegedly called 911, reporting her child was missing and that she had suspected the child had been taken by the person who taken her friend's vehicle. After officers met Smith and her friend, the vehicle was located after an extensive search, but the child was still missing. Detectives with the Crimes Against Persons Units were called in to assist with the missing child investigation. Investigation revealed the child did not exist. Smith had provided a fictitious name of the child to have, what was he called, Harvey? To have police locate her friend's vehicle quickly. Smith was arrested on charge of a false report or alarm. She remained incarcerated on Monday under a $5,000 bond. Fuck you, lady. I'm a big fan of the uh, lotus flower that she has oh, tattooed on her. Oh, I lost you, Tara. Uh-oh. Can't hear right. you. Oh, no. Oh, no, wait. Is that my fault? Hello? I didn't touch I anything. I, I think I did that. Did I do that? Hold on. I cannot. All right. Say something. Am I back? Am I back? That was you. That was that, 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 that wasn't that wasn't you. That was that was all me. I, I, I pulled something too hard and it came loose. Oh, so that yeah, was my bad. That happens as we age, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, good. I'm a big fan of the little lotus blossom tattoo because, uh, yeah, you are not working your crown chakra. Yeah, my, my lady. So mad that, <sighs> that her face. She is so pissed off. She thought she had one weird trick that doctors hate and. She's like, you can't life hack a fucking stolen car. What was your fucking plan for when they found the car with no kid? Because they were always either going to find nothing or find a car with no kid. Like, how long were you going to keep this up? Were you going to put up, like, flyers and shit? Were you going to, like, spend the next 10 years? Eventually, they need photographs of said non-existent kid. You're going to go to chat GPT and then like stable diffusion, generate a fucking kid. It's no problem. Do it all in computers. And you know, it's not like there aren't actual missing children. They might have been trying to look for that you pulled their focus away from. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to be all about oh poor cops. Fuck the cops. But there are only so many of them. And they actually are kind of obligated to look for missing children if for no other reason than bad publicity. So there's only so many of them to do that. And and you had them looking for one who did not exist. What the fuck is... Like, I understand having your car stolen fucking sucks. But having your child stolen is much, much, much worse. And you really want the police to be able to really focus on that and not some bullshit. Like, even better, this is her friend's car. Her friend gets her car back. So, upside, yeah. But you are going to need a lawyer, at the very least. Mm -hmm. You might not go to jail, but you're going to get some suspended sentence shit. You're going to be picking up trash. I don't know how much it's going to cost you over whatever the fuck that car was worth. So I hope that's a really good friend who is willing to like throw down, throw down your bail money. And that's five grand, five grand. I hope she got five grand, honey. Drive you to all your community service in that car. Yeah. I mean, you did get her car back. That's true. But, uh, what did she name the kid? Timmy old tool. <laughs> Oh, fucking can't. Oh, my God. All right. Speaking of cars, this is going to probably happen more and more often because we are in the dystopia and this is stupid and everything sucks and we no longer have regulation anymore. So brace yourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, Driverless car accused of trying to flee police after swerving into oncoming traffic. And we do have video right there. 
There we go. No driver. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Connected to rider support. <laughs> Call maybe a quarter for quality assurance. Uh, so yeah, um, in a bizarre series of events, uh, a police officer in Phoenix, Arizona had to chase down a law-breaking self-driving car, which went headlong into oncoming traffic. June 19th, camera footage reveals police officer pulling over a driverless Waymo. Footage from the police officer's body camera said it was posted to Twitter. Passerby could be heard approaching the officer asking about the incident. I couldn't help but come over here out of morbid curiosity, the citizen said. I thought there was maybe a passenger. The officer, who was connected by the car to a service representative, noticed, notified, noted the car was going eastbound the westbound lanes, which is real bad. Um... And he that's also, terrible. He also said the car tried to get briefly to get away from him once he initiated the stop. I light it up and it takes off in the intersection. Why Company does the car want to run from the cops? More importantly, where the fuck is Will Smith? <laughs> you had one job, Will. Company responded with Goddamn a statement. robots. Company responded with a statement claiming the car's illegal maneuvers were done in the interest of safety. Quote, Waymo cars are better drivers than humans and are three and a half more times more likely to avoid crashes. Really? That's, that's not the statement you release here, my By dude. By driving into oncoming traffic? You say, you say sorry is what you say. You not said, you don't pull low. It's a def, It's the best driver in the world. What's wrong with you? This is an amazing driver. This, this, My this, logic this is undeniable. <laughs> the fuck? Defenders of the malfunctioning vehicle came. The car was thrown off by unclear construction signage. Look. Have you ever driven through construction? It's not easy to follow sometimes. It's a mess. That's why That's we like having human brains doing that. That's going to happen. If the car can't go through a construction site and figure out, oh, I, I better stay in this lane and not run through the intersection. That's like basic shit. Drive it on the wrong side of the fucking road. That's that, that is, I don't I don't know about you, but I think one of the earliest things I learned about how to drive the car was you stay on the one side and not the other. Yeah. There's I, it's I not... literally I remember very clearly being in the car with my mom when I was like five and I was freaking out at a stoplight because I couldn't understand how traffic could be going two ways and not constantly hit each other. And she explained to me how the sides of the road work. That's kind of important. According to the Phoenix PD, Waymo's cars can be sighted and the company fine, but that does not happen with much frequency. Maybe it should. Do you like lay the ticket on the seat and just trust that it's going to bring it home? Like I, I mean, the car is running from the cops. So my question here is the only reason we know about this is quite last quite often with incidents like this. Someone got, we got it on video. How many times has, has this happened? That was not on video. Like this, it's just, I'm sorry, you're not going to sit there. No, it's it's better. It's better. It's a robot and it's better. No, fuck it. I don't trust these fucking companies because I don't know if you follow anything or not, but companies lie. Hi, Boeing. Mm -hmm. Um, We got one more this week. Uh, <laughs> Minor injuries. No one was seriously hurt. I will point that out. But uh, I used to do online games. 
and sometimes I still I still do like it online. But I mean, I used to have you we like back in the day. You're in a guild. You're on Warcraft. You're doing all that. You're doing raids and all that stupid stuff. I gotta tell you, when you hit a certain age with the gaming, you you take it way too seriously for a little while there. Like like like, you just do. Um, however, the most I'd ever did was, was, was kind of pitch an online fit with like in the chat room. I never got on a fucking plane, flew to someone's house, broke in and tried to beat them with a hammer. Although, if you know me, that does sound like something, you know, that kind of sounds like my brand, but... They really pulled, um, like, a Jay and Silent Bob? How many people want to kick some ass? Fernandia Beach, Florida. An online gaming dispute made its way to the real world when a New Jersey man flew to Florida to attack another player with a hammer. I mean, Edward it is Kang. real New Jersey energy. Okay, yeah. Edward Kang, 20, is attempted with is charged with attempted second degree murder an armed burglary with a mask kang and the victim another young man who about the same age as kang had never met in real life but they both played archage a uh is i saying that right archage archage i don't know i don't know with the the, the deedly bops and the ataris and the nintendos a medieval fantasy a massively multiplayer online role-playing game the game's publisher announced in April it would be shutting down servers in Europe and North America on June 27th, citing a declining number of active players. Kang flew from New York, uh, from, sorry, Kang flew from Newark, New Jersey to Jacksonville, Florida last Thursday after telling his mother that he was going to visit a friend he had met while playing a video game. Well, that's kind of true from a certain point of view. Uh, officials didn't say how Kang learned where the victim lives. Upon arrival, Kang took an Uber to a hotel in Fernandia. Fer, uh, Fernandia. Fernandina. Fernandina. I can say words. Fernandina Beach, about 35 miles north of Jacksonville. Then bought a hammer at a local hardware store. Kang went to the victim's Fernandina. 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 That place which was unlocked around 2 a.m. Sunday. The victim was walking You live in Florida. Don't leave your doors unlocked. Are you insane? The victim was walking out of his bedroom when he was confronted by Kang, who hit him on the head with the hammer. Two struggled as the victim called for help. His stepfather responded and helped restrain Kang until the police arrived. The victim suffered several head wounds that were not considered life-threatening. Uh, he received staples at the hospital. He's going to be okay. Once in custody, Kang told investigators the victim is, quote, a bad person online. He also asked deputies how much jail time people got for breaking and entering and assault. Babe. I mean, he's a bad person online. You're a bad person in real life. Right? Right? Like, I've met bad people online. Do you know what I do to them? I block them and I go on with my life. What? The, there's, there's something wrong with the gamers. What does someone have to say to you online? Like, I've heard some pretty vile shit that people say to other gamers. Like, particularly, like, I watch women gamers and, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I heard, make me a sandwich. Like... I've heard the vile shit people will say. What does someone have to say to you to make you buy a plane ticket? Get on a plane. Go to a hotel. Go and buy a hammer. Like, that's not impulse. That's not a crime of passion. Well, that's not I'm, like he was sitting next to me and he pissed me off, so I punched him. I'm not an expert, but I think the current discourse that would cause such an action would be to say The Last Jedi wasn't that bad. Haven't checked in in a while, though. Um, I just, I love, how much jail time do you get for this? You didn't think to Google that shit before your ass got on a plane? Yeah. 
Maybe, maybe do a little research before you fly across state lines and hit someone in the head with a deadly weapon. Yeah. Fucker is lucky. He's lucky. He's okay. But even if, even if they, you hit them with a hammer and they survive, it's a hammer. It's all automatically a deadly weapon. Surprise. It's instantly second degree murder. Yep. Well, I guess depending on which state, but you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Fucking hell. I'm sorry, Kang. You did not conquer. Oh, oh. Over a video game. Now, again, we like we were a dying video game. Like, shit. Remember the shit we went through in our fucking LARP and the shit people got up to? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's I saw. I said, look on your face. It says it all. We I did have to... a dude square up like he was actually going to hit me at a LARP. Over, yeah. And but... my crazy ass was like, let's light this fucking candle. I want to be the reason you get kicked out of the club. <laughs> and then a much more sensible and then like a much more sensible friend like dragged me away and was like, what's wrong with your brain? Yeah, exactly. I never, I, I, so many people doing so much bad shit. So, so like fucking shit. So, several of them, I, I swear to God, were sociopaths, but none of them made me go, where do they live? How much does hammer cost? Okay, let's go. Bean. <laughs> I didn't feel that way long enough to follow through with it is the thing. <laughs> Man, I would like be if like, if they happen to be next to me and I had a hammer, <laughs> mistakes could have been made. Yeah, but the plane ticket, though, man. Right. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna. Especially these days. Holy shit. Fucking plane. No, I ain't spend. I don't hate you that much to spend my money. No. You got to do some special shit to make me hate you that much to spend my money. I guess that's the first thing we learned this week is, is ain't nobody How worth expensive making. is your rage. How expensive. Yeah. Are you, are you really going to ADHD has saved a lot of lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we have learned that the, 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 uh, you can't, they, the driverless cars can, in fact, get pulled over. Although it's kind of at and that point. The what cops. The, and run from the cops. Yeah, that's that's a new one. Except it's not that they're gaining sentience. It's just they're they're it, It's just we live in a stupid time. They're just Very protecting corporate profit. Yeah. We've learned that you can't life hack a stolen car by inventing a missing child. Like in one way, I mean, it's gonna you can. Yeah, it's gonna work in one way, but it's gonna be offset. Shouldn't. Yeah, it's it's gonna be offset with some other. There are downsides. There there is a there is a downside. Um, we've learned. I don't know how, why we've learned this, but in case you weren't up to speed on this one, the bus doesn't stop everywhere. You gotta sit in the right spot. Unless it's a school bus, because those now stop at every single house. Which isn't even necessarily a complaint. I get it. Huh. Like, I had to walk a couple blocks to a, to a bus stop, and it sucked. Yeah, me too. But now, like, if you ever get caught behind a school bus, they stop at Lucky every driveway. Kid. And the kid is, Fuck. like, in a car at the end of the driveway. <laughs> you know? Good. Making the kids have to go through all... Yeah. Fucking the kids don't need that shit. Yeah. Good. Like I said, like that's not a complaint, but it is a change. Fucking good. Should have done that when we were fucking. Anyway, um, we've learned that Dine and Dash should not escalate to a fucking drawn weapon. If and you it's have just armed robbery. Yeah, that's that's you. You've gone and defrauding way... an innkeeper. <laughs> We've learned that's still on the books, apparently. And finally, we've learned just let the kids have the fucking happy meal. 
Like some marketing executive thought they'd come up with some brilliant shit. Some, some like, we, I've, we're I gonna save kids. Somebody called the Pope. I want to go up for sainthood for the fucking well, happy meal with the squiggle mouth. I mean, it's England. So probably they're not calling the Pope. That's true. Yes, that's right. Yeah. They're calling Chucky up at Buckingham. 